Hey there, in this video I will show you how you can set up Sentry, which is my favorite remote error tracking service in your Android application. Let's start with my web dashboard. So here inside projects, I see that I don't have any project right now, so I'm going to create one. Choose Android because that's the platform that I want to track, keep everything else default and just click on create project. Now, Sentry is amazing in the context of the documentation that they provide. They also provide the great service, by the way, but I really like their documentation. So you see immediately how you can proceed with setting up Sentry inside your Android application. But first of all, here you can choose different products. I don't need performance monitoring and profiling. If I'm not mistaken, these options are paid options and I don't want to pay for Sentry right now. They have pretty decent free plan for a project like my tech insurance application, which is just a tutorial app. So I don't need kind of performance monitoring and profiling, maybe in the future sometime. All right, to install Sentry, I just grab this new plugin and copy paste it into my build gradle. Voila. And really let's just maybe use this opportunity to switch to this better syntax. Okay, this looks cleaner. So let's sync the project. And after that, Sentry Gradle plugin will take care of pretty much almost everything. Let's get back to the documentation. Okay, once we set the plugin inside our project, we need to configure the SDK. So we need to change some aspects of this Android manifest XML file. Sentry auto initializes using a content provider hack. And for now, that's fine for me. So let's just grab all of that and copy paste it into my project. So Android manifest and somewhere here after all this stuff, let's just drop these values here. Now here, Sentry DSN value is actually something that I would like to keep secret. And therefore in the post-processing, I will probably blur it out. But in general, what we have here is this DSN, which is just kind of data something identifier. This basically a unique identifier for each project that you want to track using Sentry. And we want to enable the breadcrumbs. We want to enable screenshot for crashes and we want to view the hierarchy for crashes. That's kind of the default configuration that Sentry suggests and I'm totally fine with it. And lastly, it suggests that we need to verify that everything works here. But before I will verify that Sentry works, I want to actually go and open the more detailed documentation of Sentry. And again, they have absolutely amazing documentation, very handy, very detailed. And inside common options, I want to find how I can exclude. So I want to find exclude or ignore, maybe they call it ignore, if I'm not mistaken. I want to ignore some, no, sorry, maybe in Gradle, ignore. Yeah, I want to ignore some build times. So I don't want to use Sentry to report, uh, for example, crashes in my debug builds. And therefore I'll just copy this thing and this Sentry block goes into, where does it go? Top level block. Okay, let's try just make it the top level block uh, here inside build Gradle. Yeah, Sentry, and then I want ignore its access right. Okay, maybe inside Android. Okay, I still get these errors, but let's see, maybe that's nothing. And instead of ignoring release build time, I will to actually ignore the debug um, build type because in debug, I don't want to send any errors to Sentry. All right, once I did that, let's perform two checks. First of all, I want to make sure that whenever crash happens inside my application, in debug build, nothing happens. So let's go to, let's say home fragment and it has on start method. And inside this on start method, let's just throw some runtime exception test. And of course, I remind you Sentry documentation suggests that we use something like that, Sentry capture exception, runtime exception, this app uses Sentry, but this is basically kind of a self-created exception. This is a user error. What I want to use Sentry for is to capture unexpected exceptions, basically application crashes. And that's why I just throw this runtime exception here. And I want to make sure that in debug build variant, currently I'm in debug, let me show you this, see debug release, currently I'm in debug. So I'll just run this app on my emulator 
and I want to make sure that when it crashes, I don't get any errors inside my Sentry console. All right, the app crashed, hopefully, and let's just make sure that it crashed. Yeah, we have this exception, fatal exception in main, runtime exception test. That's exactly the exception that I placed there. So now inside projects tab, I have my Android project. And if I open the issue tab, I choose from all projects or I can filter by just Android project. But since I have just one single project here, I don't care, it's the default. And waiting for events, I don't have any events currently here. And that's exactly what I expected to see, right? I don't want to report any crashes from my debug uh, builds because, well, that's my development builds. I will be crashing them all the time while I'm working on the new features and I don't want to spam my Sentry console. So let's go back to Android Studio. And now I will switch from debug to the release build variant and relaunch the application on the emulator. And immediately I get some error. So uh, configuration, the Sentry Gradle plugin extension. Okay, basically it says that an organization slug is required. You might want to provide your Sentry org name via Sentry properties file. Okay, let's just go grab this one, copy. I can use properties file, of course, but I can also use this very handy syntax. And my organization is called, let's get back to Sentry console, go to settings and here you see organization slug, take your chance, lowercase, great, back to Android Studio. And here I just place take your chance, sync now, and let's try to rebuild the project. I get one more error, now Sentry asks me to provide the project name. Again, that's just something that I'll go to the Sentry console and here inside projects, this is my project, it's called just Android. So that's the name of the project. Back to Android Studio, just enter Android here and let's try to sync again, rebuild. And once again, I get some error, execution failed for this task, upload Sentry program mappings release. Sentry plugin automatically uploads the mapping files generated by ProGuard or R8 and an error occurred while executing this task. Please check the detail, okay. I don't have any detailed output, do I? So let's see if we have more information here. No, that's the same stuff. Let's try to see the debug option. API request failed. Sentry reported an error. Authentication credentials were not provided. Okay, I forgot something. Let's get back to this documentation and see what else. Setup, so I set up my plugin. I specified some properties, right? And I filtered the variant. Now I need to provide some project organization and authentication token in a file called, um, what's the file name? Okay, it's Sentry properties file in your project root. So I need to add Sentry properties. Let's just copy all of that. Now here inside the root of my project, I want to add Sentry properties file and just dump all of that there. Now the project is called um, Android. The org is tech your chance. And now I need some authentication token. Back to the documentation. So where do I take this auth token from? You can manually create an auth token or sign in to create a token directly from the docs. Let's just see what this manually create means. You haven't created any authentication tokens, yes. Okay, create new token, name, let's just call it my PC of token, scopes, uh, whatever, create of token. And now the token was created, of course, I will gray out the token itself, I'll just copy it, then go back to this central properties file, pass this auth token into this file, save the file, close, and let's try to rebuild the project now. And voila, finally our project built successfully after all this magic and the application crashed immediately. So hopefully we should get, let's see if we get this fatal error here. Yep, that's our fatal runtime exception test. And hopefully we will get this error in our Sentry console. Let's just verify that. So go to issues and currently waiting for events, still waiting for events. Ah, I know why it's waiting for events. How Sentry operates, whenever the application crashes, it simply writes this crash into some persistent internal persistent storage 
and it will send the crash report the next time the application is launched. And therefore, in order to get this crash report, I actually need to go back to Android Studio and here relaunch my application once again. So let's just, the application will start and of course immediately crash, but hopefully Sentry managed to send the crash reports to the backend. So let's get back to uh, Sentry console and I'm still waiting for events. So obviously something doesn't work like I expect it to work. After several minutes of debug, I think I found the problem. This DSN, which I configured inside my manifest, wasn't actually the DSN of my project. So how do I find the DSN of my project? I go to projects, Android. Here at the top right corner, I click on this gear and down here I have this client keys DSN and I just uh, copied the DSN from here. And of course I will gray this out. So that's what I did and back to Android Studio. Hopefully now after that, my application will work. Well, my application will not work because it throws exception, but hopefully Sentry will report this exception for us after this change. And let's relaunch the application because as I explained, Sentry should send the errors, the previous errors on the next app launch. So hopefully now it will work. Refresh this view. And voila, finally, 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 we get this error report inside our Sentry dashboard. So we get this runtime exception from Sentry and I can open it and get a lot of information about my application and what happened there. So you can see that the application crashed on version 13 and some additional information. We see the device class was low. <laughs> That's just the emulator. So the emulator is a low class of the device in production environment. And of course you can configure if you have multiple environments. I just don't have any environments. Is side loaded true? So Sentry even knows whether this app was side loaded or was downloaded from let's say Google Play. The level was fatal because that's a crash. Uh, Uncalled exception handler on Android 13. And okay, basically a lot of information including the release version of my application and the user ID. Now this user ID is something that Sentry just generates on the fly, but you can actually configure it if you have some kind of user ID, internal ID to your business domain, you can actually inject this user ID to Sentry and then all these crash reports will come with the user ID. And here we have the stack trace and furthermore, see, we have these kind of breadcrumbs that show us what happened. We have this exception test and then Timber says fetch latest APK info. So home fragment, it started and here I launch this core team to fetch the latest APK info, just in case there is a newer APK and I want to update uh, this application. And then I throw this exception test. And even though I threw the exception, there was enough time for this flow to log something using Timber, which is of course a very popular uh, logging library for Android. But now you can reasonably ask, wait a second, how does Sentry know about Timber? And how does Sentry know to take Timber logs and put it right here. Well, that's the magic of Sentry Gradle plugin. This plugin does a lot of stuff, including integrating, let's just see where it's written, including integrating with several popular frameworks. So Sentry Android SDK, when you use this auto installation, automatically integrates with Fragment, Timber, OK, HTTP, and Jetpack Compose. And Timber, that's the logging library that I use in my project. And therefore I get logs attached to these uh, crash reports or error reports for basically free. So very, very handy integration. And as you can see, well, not here, let's get back here. As you can see here, it's very simple to review these errors and it's very clear what's going on here. There's a lot of information that you can add, a lot of information about the device, about when it's happened, about the permission, that the application uses, you know, the battery level and a lot of stuff that will help you debug your application. So Sentry is my favorite remote error reporting platform that I use in all my projects. And now you know how to set up Sentry in your Android application yourself. And by the way, this is kind of the automatic setup using Sentry Gradle plugin, but in real production projects, I often just don't use Sentry plugin because I don't like all this magic. And therefore, if you don't use that, you need to use a Sentry command line interface, Sentry CLI yourself in order to upload the mapping files. And in addition, I don't use Sentry's 
and content provider to auto initialize this framework. Instead, I initialize it myself in Android, um, sorry, in my application class, in your manual application subclass. And all of that is kind of more advanced stuff, but for simple to start to get started with Sentry and for this tech insurance app currently, I think this will be enough. You see, it is really simple to get started and right out of the box, this uh, error reporting service gives you a lot of very handy information and a lot of options to customize uh, its behavior. All right, I think that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.